Boop. New game. Begin a new game. If you die, you can only continue with a new captain. Or if you die, you can reload or continue with a new captain. D um, let's go with legacy. I regret everything. Aiming assistance? No. Enemy projectile speed? Standard. Supply consumption? Okay. Let's make our first run rude. Especially considering I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, Emerson with the $25 mod tip. He says, a few beers to the mods, dude. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Okay, so this is a good time to mention this because I think at this point this will go on YouTube. So, first of all, hi everyone on YouTube, good to see you. Now I need to warn you guys, um, before you get too invested in this, I would see how many episodes are here because I don't know if I'm gonna play this game to completion. I don't even know if I'm gonna play it past this stream. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll think it's too much reading, we'll see. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind, this is an exploratory venture today. Log of Her Majesty's Locomotive, the Orphean. Our expedition to the Dominions of the Dead have been eventful. The Orphean is damaged and in grievous need of repairs and supplies. We're returning in haste to the Reach, where I hope to make port at New Winchester. May gods be with us for a thousand deaths of something. Final entry of Captain Amelia Charity Whitlock. The lands of the Dead. Okay. Yeah, it's feeling a lot better. Thank you for your help. Great. Oh, I drink a lot of Blue Moon. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Hey, no problem, man. No problem. Happy, happy to talk to you. I'm, we're, we're getting our AC work done, and the guy was uh, giving me an update. <laughs> Unfortunately. Turns out one of my AC units is leaking Freon. Fun! So we're getting that taken care of. Uh, Hurricane SG with the $50 tip for the best mod team on Twitch, making Conan's community the best to hang around with. Greetings from Germany. Hurricane, thank you for that. I appreciate it. You have returned to the Reach, an untamed sunless span of the heavens. London's new frontier, a celestial garden run wild. Dodge left with Q. Dodge right with E. Your journey from the Blue Kingdom was tumultuous. Your locomotive was is crippled and Captain Whitlock badly wounded. This music is beautiful. This art is beautiful. This game's beautiful. As first officer, the crew looks to you. The nearest station is New Winchester. Can you get the Orphean there safely? Much to the relief of your stokers, you find a barrel of fuel among the detritus. You've little food left now. Soon hunger will begin to bite. A wreck drifts here, less fortunate even than you. We should scavenge her for repairs, a crewman suggests. The wreck hangs in the sky, pocked with recent gunfire. You and your boarding party don your sky suits, garments of wax canvas lined with felt to protect against the cold of the sky. Two of the crews are whispering as they dress. What business did the Captain Whitlock have in the Blue Kingdom anyway? Why the devil did we trespass in the districts of the dead? You silence him. Now is not the time. Leap across to the deck. The gap between the two engines isn't wide, but the endless fathoms of heaven gate beneath it. You jump. Your stomach lurches with vertigo as the stars blaze above you and below. The air of the heavens is thin and torn by unpredictable winds. Then your boots hit the running board of the Ozymandias, and your leather-gloved hands fumble for a hold. One of your companions throws you a line and you lash the two engines together. Only then do the rest of the boarding party follow you. One of them forces open an exterior hatch, and you clamber inside. This is going to be terrible. I'm so bad at reading. Her interior is cold, unlit, and whistles with wind. Your party's lamps spread 
buttery light over the narrow paneled passages. You make your way towards the hold, stepping over bodies crumpled in the corridor. Unfortunately, your way is blocked. A bulkhead has been man mangled inward by a well-aimed barrage. So we can locate a length of pipe, 75% chance of success, or we can lead our party on a more precarious path for 75% success. Um, we're going to go back out onto the Ozymandias' hull, climb past the blockage, and enter through a window on the far side. Carefully. Yes! The rest of the boarding party follow you without enthusiasm. You recall the first time you climbed outside an engine, helping the captain fix a leak in an exterior pipe. The wind had shrieked, buffeting you, at you. You asked the captain what would happen if you slipped. You fall, she answered tersely. But where to, you asked. She looked down and then up and then back. The sky's depths spiraled all about you. Away, she said, and you heard her fear. But in the present, you tumble back into the Ozymandias through a shattered window. Your party spills in after you, glad to be back inside. You have reached the Ozymandias' hold, a ruin of smashed cargo and spilled supplies. Hopefully somewhere amidst the detritus, you can find parts to repair the Orphean and restock your stores. Conduct a thorough search. You find enough food and gear to restock your supplies and enough spare parts to make necessary repairs to the Orphean. The food will need to be thoroughly thawed, of course, but you've eaten worse in the skies. Oh ho! cries one of your party, prying the lid off a long crate. It holds a cannon, still nestled in straw. Another crewman pulls a battered bird cage from a pile of ruined cargo. Within the cage, something winged and furred opens a sullen eye. You examine your finds. We got four supplies and fifteen hull. Okay, am I supposed to double click? The Ozymandias emits a long, juddering creak. Your boarding party exchange nervous glances. From the chaos of its hold, you have retrieved repairs and supplies and discovered some useful equipment, a gun that can be mounted on your locomotive, and an educated bat. Mount the Jerusalem cannon on the Orphean. Her own weapons were damaged during your flight from the Blue Kingdom. That leaves you vulnerable. Oh, you can claim both this and the bat. The Cotrell and Hathersage Jerusalem fire single shells to a good range more or less accurately. You order two of your party to get it back to your vessel and fit it immediately. The Ozymandias groans again. The structure shudders spasmodically. Sp spas spasmodically? Okay, get the bat. Liberate a diffident bat and employ it as a scout. The heavens are wide, so locomotives use scouts like bats to locate things of interest. Ports, resources, wrecks like this one to salvage. Cool. The bat treats its rescue as an inconvenience and immediately begins haggling over pay? Your offer to put it back in its damn cage and leave it on the Ozymandias, at which point it becomes more polite. You doubt it will last. Wait, the bats talk? <laughs> okay. You've gotten a diffident bat. Um, ooh, press on to the engine room. Okay. The wreck of the Ozymandias screeches as its metal buckles and tears. You press on to the shuddering corridor, searching frantically for the engine room. Okay, so we can send a small, smaller party ahead to retrieve fuel, or go ourselves. Hearts is the skill of convincing and enduring. Mirrors is the skill of investigating and deducing. Here we go. Ooh. The engine room is gray and spilled ash and littered with corpses. Little has survived the Ozymandias' ruin. You search fruitlessly for coal but linger too long. As the wreck is racked with final violent tremors, you race back to the Orphean. With a dying groan, the Ozymandias splits in two, sending shards of splintered plating spinning into the sky. Several of them bite into the Orphean, mauling its hull. Stoking your engines, you steam away from the collapsing wreck. You are restocked, at least, and rearmed. Well, that's balls. Hmm. Okay. All right. Onward. 
Press F to send out your scouts. Ooh. Your scout returns. What has it found? Oh, it found this. Primary fire, left click. The walls of the captain's cabins are lined with a hodgepodge of curios from across the sky. Captain Whitlock lies in bed. Black marks cover her skin like a monstrous brand. When she coughs, coils of acrid smoke pour from her lungs? Um, inquire after her injuries. A word of living fire pursued the orphan, Orphean across the Blue Kingdom. It caught you just before you passed through the transit relay to the Reach, and it set its brand upon the captain. It burned itself right through her, the doctor whispers. When I closed the worst of her wounds, I could see the sign is seared into her bones and her organs. Judging from her symptoms, it's on the inside of her lungs, too. The captain leans to one side and vomits a plume of fire into a copper bowl? There's nothing the doctor can do. But Approach the bedside. Her mouth is blistered from the blue fires that dance on her tongue. Her hand grips your arms. Her skin is as hot as a kettle. Made arrangements. The Orphean will be yours. Her voice is just a rasp of burned meat breath. But promise she breaks off to scream a word in a language that was not made for human mouths. When she resumes speaking English, she is weaker. Her request little more than a gasp. Promise me one last service. Promise. Uh, uh, yeah. I promise. She sinks back, relieved. All in my will, she gasps. Be a better, she breaks off as the sigils burn into her bones, burned into her bones flare, glowing cherry red through her flesh and skin. Better captain than I. The effort exhausts her. She sinks back into the scorched pillows and a twisting, frantic fever. Dude. Your bones glowing so much that you can see it through your skin. That is that is some wild imagery. Um, oof. Take your leave. Okay. <laughs> now, on that, you leave the cabin and the scorched stink of its air behind and return to the bridge. New Winchester is further than you'd like, and the captain hasn't long left. Oh, shit. Boom! 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 That is how we do. You approach the buckled wreckage, poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. Raid the remains. Marauders pillage homesteads and hunt travelers across the reach. They often carry stolen, stolen valuables or strip it for repairs. Scavenge a marauders plating and components to repair the damaged Orphean. Um, we did take some damage earlier, but I'm still going to get the loot. <laughs> Hey, we got some gold! Your boarding party returns with wallets and watches, cufflinks, lockets, and keepsakes. You stored them in the safe to be pawned when, if, you make it back to port. Oh, thanks. Is this the right way? Yes. Wispy condensation trails cross the sky, the ghosts of passing trains. A new port, the crew are eager to see what it has to offer. Mm -hmm. How's that? Is that better? 
You coast into the bustle, the din, the soot, and the steam of Wolvesey Station. It is clogged with other engines, scrappy mining locomotives from Lustrum Way, weathered explorers gleaming with frost, sleek company vessels with bright brass fittings. No sooner have you pulled into the siding than a brusque station master bustles over. He requests to come aboard. I must speak with your captain, he insists, brandishing a ledger. The usual formalities. Look to the Orpheans' doctor. He has just appeared at your shoulder. His face is solemn. His hat is in his hands, and he lowers his eyes. The crew exchange bleak, wordless looks. The Orphean itself feels suddenly more empty. The station master looks confused. You inform him that, un inform him that unfortunately, Captain Whitlock has just passed. Ah, he says neutrally. Sorry to hear that. Very sad, very sad. He waits for what he considers an appropriate minute and a half before continuing. Alas, even amidst tragedy, the cogs of bureaucracy must turn. If Captain Whitlock is deceased, the station authority requires their answers from the first officer. He dons a set of spectacles and locates his pen. It will be relatively painless. Name, background, purpose of visit, etc. Shall we begin? Oh, character creation. Today, London lies between the stars. Her new empire unfolds across the heavens. But ten years ago, before the northern gate was opened, before the renewed empress led her people into the skies, it lay in a vast cavern far beneath the earth, deep, dark, marvelous. Who were you then? Ooh. Um... We were an academic. You were an academic. Perhaps you were educated at one of the esteemed colleges of Benthic or Somerset. Perhaps you taught yourself through trial and error and grit. Oh, and I have to pick my school? So, engineering, chemistry, anatomy. Okay, this increases your iron skill. This increases your heart skill, and this increases your veil skill. Um, practical, man. Oh! Choosing an ambition. What does winning mean to you? To win, we have to gather a substantial retirement fund, acquire lodgings at a hub port, and retire. Fame. Gather stories of your exploits and write about them in New Winchester. Or truth. Be warned, this is a demanding ambition, best played by a lineage that has already completed wealth or fame. Oh. Kit, am I okay to pick this first? Any, any experienced players in here? Like, should I not pick this first? Boop! I want the truth. I want the truth, chat. I want the truth. Oh, we gotta make her. Oh, look at this. Oh, I need a cool hat. Let's go with that one. Wait, can I, have, can I have no hat? Do I have to have a hat? No, there we go. Okay. Hmm. There's seriously no bald... Oh, there we go. We'll go with that. A little shaggy hair. Shaggy hair with a nice cap. Oh, God. Wait, was that... Were those glasses? Is that what that was? Oh, a monocle. I like the monocle. We, we doing the monocle voice. This is going to be my nose. We need the biggest nose we can find. Where's the biggest nose? Oh, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. Oh, yeah, man. I kind of like that, that one that covers my beard, but then it covers my beard, so I don't know. That one's kind of cool. I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. What is your name? Professor Ko. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Bam. So chat, from here on, you can address me as either Professor Ko 
or or Professor Carnage would also work. Yeah, let's go with that. Either of those is okay. Three weeks have passed. This morning, Captain Whitlock received a simple memorial service. Her body was consigned to the necropolis train bound for the Serene Mausoleum. Now you sit with a handful of her relatives in the threadbare offices of her solicitors. A methodical notary is reading the will. The captain was wealthy once, but squandered her capital on mysterious expenses before her expedition to the Blue Kingdom. Listen to the end. In a final condocil, condois, con condocil, the notary announces, Captain Whitlock confirmed that possession of the Orphean was to pass to its first officer. He peers at you with dry gray eyes. This includes a certain black box contained in the Orphean's hold. Captain Whitlock's final request was that, at a time of your choosing, you transport said box to an address in London. He hands you an address card and deposit it there. You are not to look inside. She gave no explanation. And that's it. You're a captain now. The Orphean is yours. Okay. Oh, hey man, don't worry about that, dude. I'll, t I'll take care of all that. I appreciate it. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> this guy's going the extra mile over here. Um, okay. Captain Whitlock's legacy. You can investigate the black box at New Winchester. You could take the box to London as requested, or you can sell it and be done. You have been bequeathed a large black box which once belongs to Captain Whitlock. You have gained a hundred sovereigns. Okay, cool. The Clamoring Central Station. Oh, these are all options. Whoa. Whoa, okay, okay. Um, the clamoring central station of New Winchester, a place of steam and smut and thundering iron. Oh my. Here you can find people willing to pay for a skilled captain's service. Let's explore the city. The smoggy, clinking, singing, stamping, thronging, frantic heart of the Reach. An ever-expanding port of soot-smudged glass and bright steel spilling across a drifting, mist-wrapped archipelago. Its factories thunder, its engine shed ring with hammers and hiss with steam. Locomotives chudge into chug into sidings for repair or flare across the sky and away into the high wilderness. We can visit the Promise of Days, learn about trading, or inquire about the Winchester War. The slow-burning war for the Reach forms the backdrop to daily life in New Winchester. Citizens wishing to keep up with the developments of the war turn to the New Gazette. It is famously the only newspaper worth reading in the New Winchester, as well as the only paper that hasn't bankrupted itself. Its quality speaks for itself. Here you can read about the progress of the war, check your reputation with factions, and who currently controls the Reach? Interesting. Who currently controls the Reach? The Assembly runs New Winchester from Victory Hall and seeks to strengthen its hand in the Reach. London's proxy, the Windward Company, however, maintains a considerable presence in the Reach. Although New Winchester is still neutral ground, tensions are mounting within and without the port. Okay. Search a new gazette for your name. Your name does not appear in any of the Tackety focusing reports on the war. Okay. An opportunity, the fastidious inspector. Excuse me, Captain. A woman pushes through the crowds towards you. She is short and square-shouldered in a neat black suit and polished shoes. She shows you the case of her pocket watch. It is embossed with the crown and hourglass of London's horological office, the body responsible for ensuring time is consistent across the Empire. I'm hoping to book passage to Port Prosper, she says, slipping the watch away. I can, of course, pay. Okay. Thank you. The locomotive I was on broke down following a boiler rupture. The chief engineer's fault, I suspect. A gentleman fonder of brandy than of diligence. Here, an initial sum to seal our bargain. Prosper lies northwest of New Winchester. Note there is no such thing as north, south, east, or indeed west out here. Instead, London cartographers picked the four brighter, more reliable stars visible from the Empress's new palace and named them north, east, west, south. Okay. Cool. And now we're taking this woman somewhere. Great. Okay. Uh, ambition, an old friend. Following your return to New Winchester, you are eager to meet up with an old friend. She is a staunch practitioner. She studied medicine and had a flair for the innovative. Innovative, her tutor would say, inappropriate research. You were surprised when she chose the solid, predictable path of becoming a general practitioner. Perhaps she was tired of arguing. 
It didn't stick. Coming to the skies revitalized her love of research. Before the year was out, she sold her practice, bought a locomotive, and became a skyfarer. Now she is captain of the Azazel. Uh, she associates with a group of seasoned captains who gather at the Promise of Days here in New Winchester. Perhaps you can find her there. Hmm. Hmm. Old pistons gleam on the wall. The shelves are crowded with mementos from across the sky. The clientele raise their voices to be heard above the comforting clamor of the adjacent engine yards. Introduce yourself to the seasoned captains. You have not... You have yet to make their acquaintance. Okay. Four gathered at the usual table. The mass citizen, a libertine, polymath and pioneer of the neo-nocturnal artistic school. The bedeviled di didact, a scholar haunted by his discoveries. The plucky baroness, explorer collector, philanthropist. Philantilist? Philantilist? Okay. And Spatchcocker Meg, who hunts monsters. Of course, everything out here is jolly dangerous, says the Baroness. Few risk the skies, so news of distant ports is valuable. Collect port reports from the places you visit and deliver them to Victory Hall or Company House. The more you turn in at once, the more they'll pay. Look for opportunities along the way, advises the mass citizen. Passengers who want to transport rich men in need of blo uh, bloody work, etc. You know she's one of their courtier, but where is she? Inquire after the staunch practitioner. Ah, she speaks of you often, the plucky baroness says. I'm afraid you've missed her. We've all been missing her recently, busy girl, but she's doing important work in London. The bedeviled didact frowns darkly and fingers one of her amulets, phrasing. We've been assisting in our own small ways, but, well, she'll want to explain herself. She left a letter for you. Meg pulls a crumpled envelope from the pocket of her patched coat. I'd open it somewhere private, where someone, she glares at the mass citizen, will try to read it over your shoulder. The mass citizen nods unapologetically. It's true. I'm a disgrace. Okay. Uh, onward? Ah, the encoded letter. Privately, you examine the letter. The staunch practitioner's handwriting, never neat, is clearly hurried. There are several unfinished trains of thought angrily struck out. She writes coyly of having embarked on a journey of the most fundamental discovery and of having uncovered celestial secrets. She says she wants to discuss her progress with you, but does not say where or when. The envelope also contains a collection of unfinished crosswords cut from the envelope. Decode the hidden message will cost... Two Savage Secrets. Okay. So we'll have to keep our eyes out for whatever that is. I can recruit the incautious driver. I specialize in test driving, but I'm looking for something quieter. The driver indicates a crashed engine still smoking. Like that, without the screaming. <laughs> um, do I want this guy? This will get you a chief engineer who will increase your iron by six, your heart by two, and the affiliate affiliation of establishment by one. Let's do it. The driver boards, eager to get started. I recently parted ways with the Windward Company. Personally, I think a crash a week isn't so bad. They disagreed. Oh well, live and learn. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Investigate the black box. Captain Whitlock left it to you in the hold of the Orphean. Her will described it only as a black box, a description you consider to be an unhelpful understatement. It is a casket of black basalt, longer than you are tall, unadorned, with a single small recess that contains a keyhole. Hmm. Consider what to do with it. The last request of Captain Amelia Whitlock was for the box to be transported to a specific address in London. Try and remember when Captain Whitlock acquired the box. Captain Whitlock had it brought on board just before your ill-fated expedition to the Blue Kingdom. It was empty then. You know because you saw the lid and the box carried on board separately and assembled in the hold. 
It's not empty now. It is sealed and even heavier than before. But you left for the Blue Kingdom shortly after the box was delivered and made no stops along the way. So whatever is inside the box now, Captain Whitlock found in the Blue Kingdom. 